and we will never waver in our determination. So many into Germany. I thought that was fascinating. I think you're exactly right. And it was an echo of what the president said during the campaign, where he was, mm -hmm. you know, openly and deeply critical of, of Merkel's policy on refugees. I think, you know, this, these remarks this morning uh, showed that the Gulf um, is still there. Maybe not uh, Atlantic yeah. Ocean size, but this was not a full scale embrace on either side. Uh, the, uh, you could see the effects of kind of the traditional uh, internationalist wing of the Republican Party, Mattis, Tillerson, mm -hmm. other voices in Congress, sanding down uh, the sharpest rhetoric. From from the president during the campaign, he didn't call NATO obsolete, but he did not give it a full bear hug either. I don't, I, you know, I, I don't know if he gave it the full embrace uh, of American commitment that, that that many there may have been hoping to hear. And there was that pointed criticism, in effect, of uh, EU policy on. about NATO here to the Europeans. You know, Ambassador Dalder, to you, you were looking to see what he said about Russia. There was a lot of talk about terror, a lot of talk. There was talk about immigration, a lot of talk. There was a lot of talk about money. One brief sentence uh, about Russia and, and, and the threats from Russia posed uh, to Europe. Did you think that was enough? No, I don't think so. And I think we, uh, we saw a president who uh, continued basically his campaign message when it came to NATO by arguing uh, with the allies enough? about how much is being spent. No, I don't uh, think so. But and without I think we committing, uh, we saw a president and, and who actually uh, continued basically his campaign United message back to, when to it back came Article to NATO by which is a treaty commitment of the allies enough. about how he did much not is being spent. spent. No, I don't uh, think so. Idea without the common committing, that we saw a president and continued. Secretary General Stoltenberg and Chancellor Merkel talked about freedom, about democracy, about the rule of law. Uh, as the foundation of the common values of the transatlantic alliance and that it is about the defense of those values uh, and the uh, solidarity that lies behind it that is the essence of NATO and instead uh, we, we, uh, we saw a lecture uh, uh, of the kind we saw during the campaign about mm -hmm. how much the United States is paying more than others uh, and how important it is and it is important that Europe do more but if this is a transactional relationship then it's not just about what uh, Europe should do. It's also what the United States commits to do. An understanding mm -hmm. that the threat to, uh, to Europe is, it comes from Russia uh, today as much, if probably more, than it comes from terrorism. And that the United States is prepared, mm -hmm. as the leader of NATO, uh, to be uh, there for the defense of Europe. Nick, he, he did begin, Nick Robertson, I want to bring you in as well, with uh, noting the Manchester attack marking a moment of silence for the victims of that attack, saying to British Prime Minister Theresa May, as you could see him look for her to make eye contact, saying, we grieve with you. But again, it is in the wake of those attacks that Article 5 is so critical, right? In the United States after 9-11 it being invoked. And now you have this rift between the UK and the US right now because of the intelligence leaks surrounding all of that, Nick. Yeah, T Theresa May is right in the uh, middle of an election cycle and her positioning of herself close to President Trump is something that potentially um, it could be part of the campaign issue. We've heard the leader of the opposition in Britain say he won't surrender Britain's security to a President Trump White House. So uh, there was another a point that came up uh, brought up by President Trump there that is potentially politically damaging, not just to Theresa May, but Angela Merkel as well, resurrecting this idea that NATO needs to be tough on immigration, not enough to pay that 2%, not enough to uh, pick up the fight against mm -hmm. terrorism, which it's been doing for more than uh, well over a decade, um, but also needs to be tough on immigration. Um, when, when the president arrives here at the G7 uh, in Italy in just a couple of days' time, he'll find that one of the topics on the agenda, uh, Secretary Tillerson was here in Italy just a month ago when hearing it back 
back then is the immigration is the issue of what to do about all the migrants that come into Italy and the rest of Europe across the sea from Libya. So that we can expect to be a, a hot topic there. But I think Secretary Tillerson will also be reflecting uh, on a moment that he had at the NATO headquarters a month ago where the German foreign minister said, yes, we do have a plan. There are plans to up defence spending to 2% of GDP. It's mm -hmm. called a budget. Those, right. the, the, the feeling from some European leaders is you cannot turn on a dime and suddenly up defence spending to 2%. Just mm -hmm. to add one other thought into the mix here, for the Europeans at the moment, one of their considerations is how do we spend that money when we up it? In Europe writ large, there, there are many manufacturers of tanks, many manufacturers of fighter aircraft, unlike the United States. So they have to consider how and where they spend that money, a more integrated defence procurement spending manufacturing system. And we're getting a look right now of what we call the class photo. This is the <laughs> leaders of all 28 NATO nations standing at a stage right there. Uh, watch for the body language. Watch to see mm -hmm. who is standing where. I haven't seen President Trump uh, enter and walk on that stage yet, so we're going to keep our eyes on that. While we wait for that, our White House reporter Sarah Murray joins us. And Sarah, you know, Poppy was talking there about when you see is. President Trump with the British Prime Minister Theresa May walk in right now. Poppy was talking about the concern over leaks. Great Britain very concerned about this, and we just got a statement from the White House. That's right. Obviously, we know that the British Prime Minister is very concerned about uh, leaks from the U.S. surrounding their investigation into the Manchester incident. So this is the statement that President Trump just put out saying the alleged leaks coming out of government agencies are deeply troubling. These leaks have been going on for a long time, Russia's and my administration will get to the bottom of this. Like the leaks Georgia, of sensitive Vladimir information Trump pose a grave threat to our national again. security. He said he's going to have the Justice Department look into that and prosecute anyone that they deem country. responsible. Uh, so similar to what we've heard from President about. Trump over the last couple Newt of weeks, Gingrich condemning leaks Washington coming from the Post intelligence agencies, it's also worth noting that Prime Minister Theresa May he's, talked he's about this on her way into the NATO meeting today, matters, talking about how treasured this intelligence sharing relationship Trump is between the U.S. and the U.K., but the fact that both sides need to be able to trust each other. Poppy, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Ambassador Dalder, uh, again, as you're actually, I'm oh, sorry, Sarah Murray, then, uh, I'm getting different messages here. Sarah Murray, to you, the White House, the president just then specifically did not tell the NATO members that we have your back. Mm -hmm. He specifically did not recommit to Article 5 there. Are you getting a sense from the people there who helped him prepare these remarks if that was a specific message that he intended to send? Well, we did not get a good sense of whether the president would say that himself. We heard his advisors in the run-up to this say that they supported Article 5 and they believed that uh, that we are sort of all in this together with the other leaders of NATO. But I do think it was a little bit of slap in the face to some of the other members. And you could see that uh, when President Trump was talking a little bit in their facial expressions as he was continuing to talk about how everyone needs to pay their fair share, but, mm -hmm. but never sort of voiced his own commitment to Article 5 or the fact that he would have the back of other uh, members of NATO. Christiana Mampour, let me just bring you back in here as we look at these pictures. This is quite a moment in this presidency. This is his first international trip. He chooses to go to NATO, an institution that he has uh, been very critical of, especially during the campaign, an institution that he schooled, in a sense, with his remarks in front of them today. What are your final thoughts as they head into these private meetings? Well, just very quickly, I've spoken both to a former you know, U.S. counterintelligence official and to the current German uh, deputy finance minister, who are all watching this. On the, the, the big picture here, they believe, at least this is from the German point of view and the European point of view, that they started so far away from mm. the U.S. administration during the President Trump campaign in the beginning months and days of his election, where he was still being hardline against the EU, uh, talking openly openly about it, breaking up, in anticipating Marine Le Pen winning in France, you know, backing people like Nigel Farage. He was mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, hostile in his, in his rhetoric to NATO, as we've just been discussing, that for, from their perspective, they believe mm. that they're putting that behind them and they want to move gradually forward on a more positive note, sort of, sort of a reset. So they think they're pulling him 
further towards where they want to be, but they know this is not a done deal. They still don't agree on, on things like immigration, on trade, on the climate, on things like that. So it's going to be a hard mm -hmm. pull. And here in Britain, they are furious, furious about the intelligence. All right, Christian Amapur, Ron Brownstein, Nick Robertson, thanks so much for being with us. Again, our special coverage of these meetings, historic NATO meetings with a very stern message from the president continues with Brianna Keeler right now. Hello there, I'm Brianna Keeler in for Kate Baldwin, and you're watching now these live pictures coming to us from Brussels, Belgium, where President Trump is having his first big meeting with NATO leaders. Areas of disagreement, there is tension here. These leaders are looking for common ground, and we just witnessed really some extraordinary remarks from President Trump there at NATO headquarters uh, at what is the unveiling of a 9-11 memorial, and he really took these leaders to task. I want to bring in a couple folks who can help me break all of this down. We have CNN uh, military and diplomatic analyst, retired Rear Admiral John Kirby. Also with me, CNN global affairs analyst and foreign deputy secretary of state, Tony Blinken. You, I should mention, John, also worked, of course, at the Pentagon and the State Department. So help me talk about, really dissect these comments from President Trump. He was taking these NATO leaders to task, saying that they he said many, 23 member nations are not paying what they should be. He was schooling them right in front of them. Yeah, to be clear, this isn't a new message that uh, President Obama made, uh, President Bush before him. Five secretaries of defense now have made this have, have made this case, but it was extraordinary to me to see him be so bellicose about this and so specific about it in what was supposed to be an opening welcoming uh, ceremony right there at, at the 9/11 memorial. So I think the the setting was uh, was extraordinary and the message was uh, perhaps I think much more stronger than. The, the NATO allies would have expected on this particular day. Than all of us expected. And, and Tony, I think the setting being extraordinary, as John mentioned, it was in front of a or near a twisted piece of metal from the World Trade Center, this 9-11 memorial. And the message there, that setting is so clear, talking about Article 5, this idea that an attack on one is an attack on all. The only time it's been invoked was uh, during 9-11, uh, following 9-11, I should say. And so you have that visual of that and yet as many people expected that Donald Trump was for the first time going to really endorse article 5 as a concept it, it didn't sound like we heard that am I wrong I didn't hear it and in fact I think our allies heard what they didn't want to hear and didn't hear what they wanted to hear they wanted to hear exactly what you just said which is the president reaffirming article 5 and in fact the only time it's been invoked uh, that an attack against one is an attack against all was after 9-11 when our allies stood up for us and they wanted to hear the president say the United States would always be prepared to stand up for them. They didn't hear that. And instead, as, as John said, and as you said, uh, they heard a lecture on defense spending. Now, the truth of the matter is this. Uh, that spending has been starting to go up since the whale summit in 2014 under President Obama. Uh, and indeed, previous secretaries of defense and presidents have gone at the allies, but not in the same bellicose in your face way that we just heard from the president. I, I'm concerned it's going to be counterproductive. The reason that the allies have started to spend more on defense uh, is not because of Donald Trump. It's because of Vladimir Putin and the threat that he represents. But the problem is this. President Trump is unfortunately not popular in many European countries, starting with Germany, the country that really should do more on defense spending. So when he lectures on defense spending, it hits German ears in exactly the wrong way. He's the wrong person to be making that argument. It actually puts Merkel, Chancellor Merkel, in a difficult spot. Her public when they hear uh, President Trump go saying you've got to spend more, they're going to say to her, don't listen to him. That's a problem. Let's listen to what Donald Trump said to all of these member nations. These grave security concerns are the same reason that I have been very, very direct with Secretary Stoltenberg and members of the alliance in saying that NATO members must finally contribute their fair share and meet their financial obligations. But 23 of the 28 member nations are still not paying what they should be paying and what they are supposed to be paying for their defense. This is not fair to the people and taxpayers of the United States. And many of these nations owe massive amounts of money from past years and not paying 
in those past years. Over the last eight years, the United States spent more on defense than all other NATO countries combined. If all NATO members had spent just 2 percent of their GDP on defense last year, we would have had another $119 billion for our collective defense and for the financing of additional NATO reserves. We should recognize that with these chronic underpayments and growing threats, even 2 percent of GDP is insufficient to close the gaps in modernizing readiness and the size of forces. We have to make up for the many years lost. 2 percent is the bare minimum for confronting today's very real and very vicious threats. If NATO countries made their full and complete contributions, then NATO would be even stronger than it is today, especially from the threat of terrorism. President Trump there in Belgium, but John, it certainly seems as if he's speaking to an audience as well that is not there, and that would be his base that supports him. We've heard from Tony there, dues have been going up in recent years, but at the same time, Donald Trump does have a base that is wondering, you know, why does the U.S. have to do it all? These folks in Europe are just mooching off of us, and that's certainly their opinion that the U.S. is doing it all. Yeah, look, I mean, this will appeal to people that uh, voted for Donald Trump. There's no question about that. Uh, but what I think people are missing is that the United States has special global leadership responsibilities. Yes, we're a member of NATO. Yes, there's 27 other countries, uh, but not all of them can be expected to contribute in the same way we can or we should quite frankly the United States has special convening power and facilitation power we, we have other global responsibilities outside NATO that many of those nations really don't have to worry about so there's a lot that goes into this picture um, and you know when he talks about underpayments it's important for people to understand you don't pay dues to NATO what he's talking about here are their national decisions about defense spending on their own and they their all agree commitments agreed, to right, defense and they agreed back in Warsaw a few years ago for two percent they recommitted in Wales as uh, Mr. Blinken mentioned, that's what we're talking about, not, not payments of dues. A really extraordinary day here as the president is in Belgium. One of the areas of contention with one of these uh, member nations is uh, we've heard that Theresa May of Britain was going to be confronting the president about leaks, information that had been shared from the UK with the US when it came to this bombing in Manchester. And now Sarah Murray uh, uh, joining us, she's on this trip with the president, a statement coming out from the administration, from the president about their reaction to this information uh, being published in the US, confirmed by US officials before British officials ever wanted it out there. What can you tell us? That's right. Well, we're, we're still waiting to see when President Trump and Theresa May might meet privately to discuss this. But as you pointed out, there has been a lot of concern from the UK government that information surrounding this investigation uh, into the Manchester attack uh, seems to be coming out, uh, being leaked from US intelligence. So the president put out a statement today addressing that issue. It says, in part, the alleged leaks coming out of government agencies are deeply troubling. These leaks have been going on for a long time, and my administration will get to the bottom of this. The leaks of sense information pose a grave threat to our national security. And we also pointed out that he was going to press the Justice Department to look into where these leaks are coming from. And once they find who is leaking, they're going to prosecute those people to the fullest extent of the law. So this mirrors a lot of the rhetoric we've heard from President Trump back in the United States surrounding a number of different intelligent leaks, essentially saying these compromise our national security. Now, as for the Prime Minister, Theresa May addressed reporters on her way in to the NATO summit as well. And she she reaffirmed the special nature of this intelligence sharing relationship between the United States and the UK, but said it really hinges on both sides being able to fully trust one another. Brianna. All right, Sarah Murray, stay with us as you're watching the scene unfold there in Brussels. Uh, Tony, I want to talk to you about this. How is the rhetoric that we're hearing there when it comes to leaks, and certainly there are concerns from Theresa May and other countries as well, can they trust the US when they're sharing this important information? But how is this uh, something besides a continuation of what we saw under President Obama, who had an unprecedented number of leak prosecutions that his administration pursued? 
Well, look, you're right. This is certainly an ongoing story. It's not a story that started with the Trump administration. It's afflicted uh, various administrations uh, in different ways. But this particular leak seems particularly egregious because it was in the midst of an active uh, investigation and possibly an active ongoing threat. And in that situation especially, uh, loose lips sink ships. So uh, I can understand why uh, the Brits are very upset about this. Hopefully, we can rein this back in and get this under control because this goes to our security as well. The intelligence that we get from our partners, from our allies, is vital to our own security. If they start uh, to um, move in another direction and shut that down because they can't trust us, it's going to harm us, not just them. And John, to this point, uh, I mean, let's just explain to our viewers what we're talking about, what got leaked. American media getting information from U.S. sources were first to report the initial death toll after the blast, the method of the attack, and then also the identity of the bomber, all before British officials hoped that this would be out there. You can understand this when you're talking about the identity of the bomber, because that may provide connections to other people who could be around him, who could help him. They're sure. in the process of doing raids, right? The British. Right. You have to understand that the, the, the network who helped this man commit this brutal uh, crime, they're watching news media as well. And so they're, gle they're gleaning information and intelligence off of what they're seeing from press reporting. And when you have an ongoing, not, I mean, it was still an active scene, not to mention a potential for, 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 you know, manhunt for more perpetrators. When this is ongoing, it's absolutely critical that no information get leaked to the press that could that could harm that those investigative efforts or those or those police and security efforts. So, I mean, real lives could have been put at risk here. It's 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 a very dangerous thing. Fred Pleitgen is following this for us, uh, and this is pretty interesting. Fred, we're seeing Theresa May, uh, I believe, sitting next to President Trump, following this class photo there of these NATO member leaders. Uh, you know, what can you tell us about uh, this this uh, investigation? Well, the investigation is apparently moving forward at a very fast pace. We've seen a lot of arrests take place over the past couple of days. In fact, there were two uh, that happened earlier today. So it appears as though the police uh, believe that they might be closing in on this network that they believe uh, must have been uh, behind all of this. And one of the reasons why they say that is that apparently the device that was used, according to uh, some of the pictures that were seen, uh, appears to be quite sophisticated. And there's many here who believe that uh, the man who's apparently behind all of this, Salman Abedi, must not have had had the knowledge to build such a sophisticated device. And that's one of the reasons why the authorities believe there must be a bigger network there. So they're continuing to conduct raids there in the Manchester area. They're continuing to take people into custody for questioning. But of course, it is still very much an ongoing investigation. That's also one of the reasons, Brianna, why the authorities here are so furious at these leaks that have been coming out. And certainly you're hearing that from on the ground in Manchester, where they took that very extraordinary step of saying, look, we're just not going to share any more intelligence on this matter with our American counterparts because they believe they simply can't take that risk, Brianna. So what do you make of this? Because Donald Trump comes out with a statement saying, mm. essentially, we are cracking down on this. We take this seriously. We had heard that Theresa May yeah. was going to be confronting him on this issue of intel leaks. Also, Donald Trump doesn't like leaks. He's made that very clear about leaks that pertain to his administration. Yeah. Was this him sort of beating her to the punch, showing a seriousness? Or was this something that was induced uh, by something Theresa May may have already said to him? Do we know? Well, we know that they've already spoken. We know that Theresa May said that she already was on the phone with President Trump and told him that she believes that something like this can't happen and that the mutual trust uh, between these two countries certainly needs to continue to be uh, in place and needs to be restored to a certain point uh, as well. So certainly it might have been uh, him trying to conduct some damage control and saying, look, we're trying to do something about this. We're trying to stop this. It's unclear uh, how uh, Miss May is going to react to all of this. But in the end, it seems as though at least the authorities there in Manchester for the time being have made their decision and said, look, we're just not going to share uh, any more intel uh, with our colleagues in the United States on this simply because of what's happened so far already. And it's something that they take very seriously because this is a very, very important investigation that's going on. It could be a life or death matter uh, in certain instances if, in fact, there still is an active cell here in this country uh, that has the knowledge and has in the past already been able 
to manufacture bombs that kill a lot of people. So right now they are investigating at a very high pace. And the last thing that they need is for their investigation to be hampered by leaks that are coming out. And it's something that they've made very clear and something where they say that uh, in order to conduct this investigation without any more pitfalls, they need to just stop this information from flowing. So it is a very, very big step. And it's going to be very, very interesting to see uh, how these meetings uh, between Theresa May uh, and President Trump are going to uh, turn out and what exactly the wording there is going to be afterwards. Tony, I wonder, do you think that this is smart diplomacy and also that this may actually have the effect of chilling some of the leaks? Is this a smart move on the part of the Trump administration as they say they're going to really address this? Yeah, no, the president did the right thing in putting out that statement and putting out a strong statement, making it clear uh, that uh, he was going to try to do something about this, sending a very strong message to our own uh, bureaucracy, his own bureaucracy, uh, that this needs to stop. So it was the right thing to do. And whether it was getting out of ahead of uh, Prime Minister May or not, um, I'm not sure, but it was the right message at the right time. But we have a lot of trust to build back, and um, that's not going to happen in the matter of a day or with one statement. I saw you uh, nodding your head as you listened to Fred's report there yeah. about the leaks. It just, it, I think it's important to, to realize how extraordinary this is. It's, it's the UK. It's our closest ally, uh, a, a nation that has been at our side uh, repeatedly over so many decades this on so like many issues. This is like a constant cousin, right, yeah. if we're I mean, putting this, it in terms. This is someone the, who has your back. Yeah, and for the UK to say, you know what, on this particular issue, we're not sharing with you anymore, that is significant. I, I agree with, with, with Tony, too. The, the president had no choice. He had to react this strongly, and, and he was, it was good that he did that, and it, it should be investigated and prosecuted, but let's not forget how significant this is coming from the UK. If they're not sharing information, John, just let's let's talk not necessarily just about this terror attack, but other ones uh, as well. And obviously the, the not sharing is happening just with this investigation. Right. But when you're looking at other things, there are tentacles that stretch from Britain to the U.S. Mm -hmm. This is a very important uh, avenue of uh, information and communication, right? Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the U.K., again, not just one of our closest allies, but one of our best intelligence relationships in the world. Uh, and so hopefully this won't bleed over into any other thing. And I can't imagine that the U.K., having knowledge of anything that might affect our security, would, would withhold it from us. But this is an extraordinary step by them that I think we need to take seriously. You know, I, I talked to a friend in the intelligence community yesterday, and he said he hasn't seen any chilling effect yet in, in other nations about in, intelligence sharing, particularly in the wake of the Oval Office meeting with Kislyak and Lavrov. But he said they, the uh, intelligence agencies around the world are very interested in the relationship between our White House and our intelligence community. That's where they're, that's the barometer they're really looking at. That's very interesting. John, Tony, Sarah, Fred, stand by for me uh, for just a moment here. In a little while here, the most powerful Republican in the House is set to uh, address the charges against the re Republican who is looking to join his ranks. The candidate in Montana accused of assaulting a reporter, charged, I should say, with assaulting a reporter, body slamming him to the ground, punching him as well, this is voters are making their choices at the polls right now. Stand by for that. What makes this simple salad the best simple salad ever? Heart healthy California walnuts. The best simple veggie dish ever. Heart healthy California walnuts. The best simple dinner ever. Heart healthy California walnuts. Great tasting, heart healthy California walnuts. So simple. Get the recipes at walnuts.org. Have you been diagnosed with spinal stenosis, bulging or herniated disc, sciatica, or other chronic spine conditions? Are you ready to find lasting relief? Call Laser Spine Institute, the nation's leader in minimally invasive spine surgery, to learn how a less than one inch incision can have you up and walking within a few hours of surgery, free from chronic back pain and with no hospital stay and no lengthy recovery. Call 1-800-216-BACK now for your no cost MRI review. Take your first step in joining over 60,000 patients who found lasting relief at Laser Spine Institute. When you're in that much pain and you live on painkillers, you really don't have quality of life. I feel like 
Laser Spine Institute was an answer to prayer. The heavens had opened up and it was like, I can live again. If you've been told you might need neck or back surgery, call 1-800-216-BACK now for your no-cost MRI review. Laser Spine Institute, a less than one inch incision, a lifetime of standing tall. Is your skin dry? Then moisturize with Aveeno Skin Relief with oat oil and natural shea butter. It softens and smooths extra dry skin and lasts for 24 hours. Aveeno, naturally beautiful results. Is your with type 2 diabetes, a lower dry, A1C is a lot about choices, but it can be hard sometimes because different sides of you struggle with which ones to make. Well, what if you kept making good ones? Then, with you could love relief. your numbers. With oat oil and Discover once butter. daily in Vokana, a and pill used along with diet and exercise and to significantly hours. lower blood Avino, sugar in adults with type 2 diabetes. Results. It's proven to lower A1C with type 2 diabetes. Nubia, a lower A1C works a lot of our choice sending some sugar out of your body through the process of urination. It's different sides of your struggle with which ones to make or weight loss. Well, may help. What if you kept making good ones? Invokana may cause dehydration. Then, you could Vino love your numbers. Which could make you feel dizzy or discover stand up. daily Invokana. So be sure to drink it all with diet and exercise. It's a good side effect to know if you have a kidney with type 2 diabetes. Genital yeast infections it's proven to lower your urination. Type 2 diabetes is a serious urinary tract infection. Acid or sending some sugar out of your body cholesterol or potassium. Heal acid or lowers a serious condition which can be life-threatening. Stop taking Invokana and call your doctor right away if you experience symptoms or if you have an allergic reaction with signs like rash, swelling, or difficulty breathing or swallowing. Do not take if you have severe liver or kidney problems or are on dialysis. Taking with a sulfonylurea or insulin may cause low blood sugar. The choice is yours. Lower your blood sugar with Invokana. Imagine loving your numbers. There's only one in Volcano. Ask your doctor about it by name. Closed captioning brought to you by Mesobook.com. We offer a free book on mesothelioma. Call for the free book and receive so much more. Call 1-800-831-3700. So election day actually today right now polls are open for a special election in Montana which has made its way into the national spotlight this morning after the Republican candidate running for a seat in Congress was charged with assault for allegedly body slamming a reporter Republican candidate Greg John Forte held uh, off taking a stance on the GOP health care bill uh, waiting for the congressional budget office score that price tag to come out and then it did and a reporter from The Guardian, Ben Jacobs, tried to press John Forte, not even press so much as just simply ask a question for his stance on this, now that the CBO has released that price tag. And the audio really speaks for itself. Here's what happened. Into the CBO score, as you know, you were waiting to make your decision about health care until you saw the bill and it just came out. And, what yeah, you and we'll talk to you about that later. Yeah, but there's not going to be time. I'm just curious if you okay, have Okay, speak right with now. Shane, please. But you don't The last time you came here, you did the same thing. Get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. The last guy did the same thing. You were the guardian? Yes, and you just broke my glasses. You the last guy did the same damn thing. You just body slammed me and broke my glasses. Get the hell out of here. You'd like me to get the hot up here, I'd also like to call the police. Can I get you guys' names? Hey, you gotta leave. He just body slammed me. You gotta leave. Well, Greg John Forte was charged overnight with misdemeanor assault. I want to go now to CNN senior media and politics reporter Dylan Byers. I mean, Dylan, you read what happens here, but when you hear that audio, that's when you can see just how quickly this escalated and the appearance that this candidate just really snapped. Yeah, absolutely right. And, uh, you know, it speaks to the importance of actually having some documentation about these things before you even get to the aggressive uh, and somewhat troubling nature of the violence. Let's just talk here for a second about the ineptitude of Gianforti's campaign. You're in the room. There are other witnesses in the room. There's a reporter in the room who's holding a recorder to your face. You then, the candidate then allegedly body slams him. And what do you do? The campaign comes out with a statement 
uh, basically describing an alternate reality, an alternate version of events that uh, has no relationship whatsoever to what was on the audio recording or to what other people witnessed. What they said, and I'll just read you part of it here, is that uh, the reporter was aggressive, he was badgering them with questions, uh, and that uh, the candidate asked the reporter to lower his recorder and he declined, asked him to leave the room. None of that happened. None of that was in the audio. They put out this statement anyway. Hours later, uh, a team from Fox News that was in the room that had been interviewing the candidate comes out and says, look, we saw the same thing. Uh, Gianforte grabbed the reporter by the neck with both hands, slammed him to the ground. At no point did the reporter, Ben Jacobs, uh, do anything uh, uh, at all that was aggressive or, or badgering towards the candidate. So, look, it, the, the violence uh, alone, uh, you can argue, would make uh, Gianforte disqualified from this race. But certainly the sort of ineptitude and this idea that they could somehow skate by on this, on the belief that they were just 24 hours away from the vote, uh, it seems to me it's just baffling. He does this, as you mentioned, with witnesses there. Uh, a Fox News uh, reporter has written about this and exactly what she saw. Multiple people saw this. I want to listen to what Ben Jacobs himself said on CNN's New Day today about what happened. It was an open room in, in the campaign headquarters, that it was not, not mark, marked off in any way. It, Went over to went over to ask the congressman a question in a way that you know as he was chatting with uh, making small talk with other reporters in a way that you know you, you you know waiting to join in the conversation in a way that uh, characterizes most normal human interaction. It was this very strange moment that he suddenly you know grabs my recorder and then things go go haywire from there. That you know, I've spent a lot of time reporting on Capitol Hill, a lot of time asking politicians questions about health care. And it's, uh, and it's uh, never, never ended in, uh, in any sort of altercation. Now the question, it seems, Dylan, is how bad uh, is this going to be for this candidate? We've heard at least anecdotal reports that some people who are among the third of Montanans who have cast their ballots, or, or a third of, of the folks in this particular election who have cast their ballots, are wanting to change their vote. But maybe some people, and I've heard this certainly on Twitter, are going to back up this candidate and be glad he did this. That's true. You, you know, it, it'd be foolish to sort of try and, and, and make assumptions here about exactly what's going to happen. Uh, our colleague, Kyung La, has reported uh, that uh, there are some requests to see if people can change their early ballots. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's something that they're allowed uh, to do under Montana state law. But, but again, the fact that this happened does not necessarily mean that all of a sudden Montana is going to swing in favor of Gianforte's op opponent, the Democrat. Uh, there are, you can imagine, some cases in which people would sort of back this up, in part because there is so much antipathy and, and, and so much distrust of the media. You know, we saw throughout the 2016 campaign, you and I were at many of these rallies, the sort of anti-media rhetoric coming from the now president of the United States, uh, there are indeed, there could indeed be some Montanans who who celebrate this sort of approach to the media, and that that in and of itself uh, is troubling. But as to how this actually shakes out, of course, we'll have to wait and see what happens tonight. All right, Dylan Byers, thank you so much for that report. Uh, and let's talk next about what the most powerful Republican in the House is going to say about this. We are expected that we will find out from Speaker Paul Ryan. We're just moments away from that. Why weigh yourself down? Try Aveeno Sheer Hydration. Its active naturals oat formula goes on feather light, absorbs in seconds, keeps skin healthy looking and soft. Aveeno, naturally beautiful results. You might take something for your heart, your joints, or your digestion. So why wouldn't you take something for the most important part of you, your brain? With an ingredient originally found in jellyfish, Prevagen is now the number one selling brain health supplement in drugstores nationwide. Prevagen, the name to remember. Attention Medicare beneficiaries. Many people with Medicare may be able to get extra benefits and don't even know they're available. You may be able to get dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage included in your plan. 
The Medicare Coverage Helpline is accepting calls to see if you're eligible to enroll now. You may be able to get extra benefits, including dental, vision, and prescription drug coverage. Hi, I'm Dr. Jason Buckwald. Making sure you go to the doctor and taking all your medications as prescribed can help protect your health. To make it easier, you may now be able to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan that includes coverage for dental, vision, and prescription drugs. Help protect your health by choosing the right plan for you and get all the benefits you deserve. Call to see if you may be able to get extra benefits, including dental, vision, and prescription coverage. Don't delay. Call to see if you're eligible to enroll and may be able to get extra benefits now. Call 800-779-8200. That's 800-779-8200. Listen, sugar, we're letting you go. It's that Splenda Naturals gal, isn't it? Look, she's sweet, she's got natural stevia, no bitter aftertaste, and zero calories. All the partners agree. Even iced tea? Especially iced tea. Goodbye, sugar. Hello, new Splenda Naturals. Will you be ready when the moment turns romantic? Cialis for daily use treats ED and the urinary symptoms of BPH. Tell your doctor about your medicines and ask if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Do not take Cialis if you take nitrates for chest pain or edemphis for pulmonary hypertension, as this may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Do not drink alcohol in excess. To avoid long-term injury, get medical help right away for an erection lasting more than four hours. If you have a sudden decrease or loss of hearing or vision or an allergic reaction, stop taking Cialis and get medical help right away. Ask your doctor about Cialis. The Dan Gote Group stands at the forefront of African enterprise. Since 1978, we've touched the lives of millions of people by meeting their basic needs. Our belief in the promise of Africa has taken us into 14 African countries. With substantial investments that will propel the continent towards greater prosperity, promising jobs, improved standards of living and economic growth. Dan Gote, for an empowered Africa. I could tell right away ZipRecruiter was going to make hiring a lot easier. Go to ZipRecruiter.com and post... Uh, ...bipartisan action to combat child abuse and exploitation. A report of child abuse is made every 10 seconds in this country. And human trafficking, human trafficking is one of the world's fastest growing crimes. While worrying comes naturally for parents... It is staggering to consider the different forms that child exploitation can take. It could be a coach or someone close to you, or it could be a total stranger on social media acting alone as part of a global operation. Together, Republicans and Democrats are taking action to protect the most vulnerable and to punish those who abuse them. With these initiatives, we will go after child sex offenders, and we will make sure that survivors have the highest protection under the law. Second, ahead of Memorial Day, we are tackling bipartisan uh, challenges and we're taking bipartisan action to help our veterans and their families. It is especially good news that we are making progress on fixing the long-standing problems with the VA claims backlog. So many of us in Congress have been working on this for so many years, dealing with our own constituents and their problems. Veterans got bills to pay. They have families to support. The last thing they should have to deal with is endless bureaucracy. Unfortunately, that's what's gone on with the VA with this claims backlog. So if you've been involved in Congress working on these caseworkers, it is just heart-wrenching to see a veteran who needs health care get stuck in this claims backlog. The initiative that the House passed this week with bipartisan unanimous support will expedite the process so that veterans can get timely decisions and have real peace of mind and we can get rid of this claims backlog. Lastly, I want to talk about a very important health care report. It's a report um, from the Department of Health and Human Services. It's the ASPE data point report. The Department of Health and Human Services has released an analysis that says that since Obamacare went into effect, average premiums have more than doubled nationwide. Since Obamacare went into effect, average health care premiums have doubled nationwide. Remember, remember when President Obama promised that his health care plan would lower the typical family's premiums by up to $2,500? Under Obamacare, average premiums have gone up by nearly $3,000. This law did not drop premiums by $2,500 as promised. Average premiums have gone up by over $3,000, by nearly $3,000. Just yesterday, a new shoe drops every week on Obamacare, it seems. Just yesterday, Blue Cross and Blue Shield announced 
that it will pull out of 32 counties in Kansas and Missouri. This will affect 67,000 people.